This is Magellan, and he has the rare status of being one of the only opponents that Luffy has never been able to beat. He was a man trusted by the world government to handle the world's most dangerous criminals in his own personal hell, equipped with one of the most broken devil fruits we've ever seen. If Magellan so much as breathes in your general direction, then you're dead, we're talking that kind of broken. Prior to the Five Elders, Magellan was the closest thing we had to a literal demon, but I want to know how he stacks up in the series as a whole. Because we are on a mission to rank every major antagonist in the most comprehensive and exhaustive way possible, video by video, this time featuring the Guardian of Hell, Magellan. And I feel like that's a pretty good place to start. Early designs of Magellan state that he was meant to have a title more akin to Guardian of Hell rather than Warden. But title or no, Magellan is the facilitator of the closest thing the One Piece world has to Hell. Even on level one, the Crimson Hell, they're torturing prisoners by releasing poisonous spiders into a forest of blades. So the prisoners can either let themselves be killed by the spiders or try to flee and inevitably impale themselves on all of the blades. Ideally both, I guess. Then during the introduction to level three, the stun Salvation Hell, Oda shows us the corpse of a prisoner tied to a rack who they had let starve to death. Meanwhile, on level four, they do the exact opposite and they literally cook prisoners in a giant boiling pot. So Oda drew some pretty genuinely horrific things in this arc and proceeding through Impel Down is almost like going through a Diablo dungeon with the demon responsible for all of it being our main antagonist. And throughout all of Impel Down, it is made apparent that Magellan is not to be treated the same way that we've treated every other antagonist prior to him. And his dominance is made immediately clear. The first time he even comes close to stepping into action is when he takes Boa Hancock to level six to see Ace. And when the prisoners start simping over Hancock and calling Magellan Diarrhea Man, he then activates his Poison Hydra, which is one of the more intimidating abilities that we've ever seen, just period. And on top of that, Magellan just up and decides to kill a dude. And he adds, never forget that I have the power and the authority to execute all of you right here and now. Quite intimidating, but it needs to be said that as much as Magellan positions himself as a demon, he is far from one. It's more of a facade that he puts on to maintain order and control. Something that he quite literally puts on actually, because Etra Oda has stated that Magellan's horns are detachable. But Magellan is strongly motivated by justice. It's quite similar to Sakazuki's absolute justice, just probably a step removed. Because I think that if Sakazuki were in charge of Impel Down, then he wouldn't even bother holding prisoners, he'd just execute them all. Whereas Magellan, even though he inflicts horrific acts on the prisoners and will kill them, every now and then, always maintains a purpose relating to justice. He doesn't do all of the things he does for no reason. He isn't a mindless killer, nor will he allow any treatment of prisoners that he considers an injustice, such as the whole Shiryu situation. When Shiryu went on an inmate killing spree, Magellan stopped him and said, these prisoners aren't here to satisfy your bloodlust, Shiryu. After which point, Shiryu was captured, tried, convicted, and imprisoned himself, which sounds a whole lot like that justice thing. With that said, it takes quite a lot to cross Magellan's line of justice for those imprisoned and impel down, given all of the daily torture and killing, but Magellan is pursuing his own admittedly extreme sense of justice, which makes him a degree more empathizable than more of a pure monster like Shudio. But the other motivation to keep in mind with Magellan is pride. For example, the very first thing he says to Luffy is, for you to break into this impregnable prison is sullying my reputation, because impel down is a symbol of justice. If one prisoner steps one foot outside of these walls, then that symbol is broken. Now, in regards to this, you might say, well, man on the internet, did you forget about Golden Lion Shiki, hmm? To which I would say, technically, he did not step any feet out of Impel Down, he had to cut them both off. But also, this was not under Magellan's leadership. We do actually see Magellan in volume zero, and he was a mere vice warden 22 years ago when Shiki escaped. So if anything, Magellan's got something to prove to his predecessor, or had something to prove because, you well, know, it doesn't work out well. But all of which paints a picture of a very fearsome, loyal, and detail-oriented man demon. But funnily enough, that was in no way how he was introduced to us. No, 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 no. Our introduction to Magellan is a detailed explanation of his toilet habits. Warden Magellan has diarrhea for about 10 hours each day. It's part of his daily routine to hole up in the restroom. He also sleeps about eight hours a day. Given time off for meals and breaks, he only works about four hours a day. Domino then goes on to say, but he can be quite productive when necessary, which is, which is good. But it gets crazier because Magellan and his vice warden Hannibal then have this back and forth. I'm sorry I had diarrhea. I got food 
poisoning from my poison soup this morning. I think you got poisoned because it was poison. As a poisonous human, poison is my favorite food. You know what they say, fight poison with poison. It doesn't work. That's why you get diarrhea. So Magellan inflicts this quirk on himself. And this is often seen as one of the most random and just simply bizarre character quirks in the series. But it's a reference to Magellan's visual design inspiration, which comes from a demon named Belphegor, whose MO is to seduce people into laziness and is usually depicted sitting on a toilet. Oda saw that toilet demon and he went, yep, that's my guardian of hell. But also Magellan has much more emotional range than I think most people remember. There's a page during his introduction where he switches emotion in literally every single panel. In the first, he's demonically releasing poison. In the second, he's laughing uncontrollably and goofily. In the third, he's being what I can only describe as petty evil. And then in the last, he is being love struck by Boa Hancock. This single page of Magellan is an emotional roller coaster. When I was first reading Impel Down, I had no idea what to make of the guy. It was like he had every quirk in one piece all smushed into one demonic diarrhea ball. Zora's demonic nature, Sanji simping, Luffy's stupid joy, Nami's petty evil, and all of that is on top of the fact that he spends 10 hours a day emptying his eternally full bowels because he will not stop eating poison. And I don't know, it, it's a lot. I usually love One Piece character quirks, but I would argue that Oda may have overplayed his hand a bit with Magellan. And part of me thinks that this could be because of Impel Down Syndrome, which is a term I just made up to describe Oda's tendency to overcompensate with comedy in particularly dark settings. You see this most prominently with the Impel Down and Thriller Bark arcs, two very gloomy, dark, and dreary locations, but also two of the weirdest and funniest arcs in the entire series. So because we're dealing with someone sculpted to be a representation of the devil, Oda may have felt the need to balance that out with every quirk he had in the stupid quirk arsenal. And I think it's just, uh, it's a bit too much. Magellan didn't need this many wacky tendencies crammed into him. Just the diarrhea alone was plenty for me. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention, Magellan is also agoraphobic. Another quirk to add to the pile, but it makes him pretty perfect for Impel Down because he likes controlled dark spaces. And that's also my personal conspiracy theory for why he continues to poison himself. Because that gives Magellan an excuse to spend 10 hours a day in his nice, safe, and enclosed toilet. But the agoraphobia also probably contributes significantly to his strategic prowess over the prison, as someone with this condition would be hyper aware of the space and exits. The saving grace for Magellan is that his gazillion wacky quirks don't tend to get in the way of his job. When something needs to be done, Magellan is on you like a drop bet on a tourist visiting Australia for the first time. Much like that time when Magellan dropped out of the sky in front of Luffy, a panel that I love because there is a real sense of overwhelming power and I love that Oda didn't add pupils to Magellan's eyes because it makes him look that much more sinister and demonic. Even the positioning of Luffy adds to it because he's taken completely off guard. So he's assumed this defensive position, which tells you everything you need to know about how this match is gonna go. Luffy is not ready for an opponent of this level. And then when the inevitable happens, Magellan's assumed last words to Luffy are, this is your punishment intruder. You will suffer for 24 hours and then go to hell. No One Piece villain has ever said a harder line than this. Although in classic Oda style, this is then balanced with the next time we see Magellan being on the toilet with a rather strained expression, because apparently even using his abilities causes him to have diarrhea. But Magellan is undefeatable. All Luffy can do is run. In fact, all anyone can do is run, which gives Impel Down the kind of tension to feel more like a horror movie than it does a shonen manga. Especially right at the end when Magellan is pursuing everyone and not a single person can stand up to him for more than a handful of seconds. And it's always worth noting that Magellan and completely team wiped the Blackbeard pirates as well. And were it not for Shiryu, Blackbeard, Virgis, Doku, Van Alga, and Lafitte would all be very, very dead. Let's put it this way. In the space of a single arc, Magellan faced three future emperors of the sea and soundly defeated two of them. Luffy, Blackbeard, and Buggy were all present for Impel Down, and I am convinced that this event will be remembered much like God Valley. Magellan is Roxy Zebek, with Luffy, Buggy, and Blackbeard needing to team up together like Roger and Garp did. It's going to go down in history as a decisive and brutal battle where three future emperors combined their powers to beat the system. And even then it was a struggle because Magellan is a strategic mastermind. At every step along the way, he understands the correct course of action to take. And again, despite his various crippling quirks, he does not hesitate to take action. However, his one arguable strategic flaw just so happens to be one of the biggest mistakes ever made in One Piece, which was to free Shiryu to theoretically help out during an event that I'm going to refer to as the Riot of three emperors, where Luffy, Buggy, and Blackbeard led their forces simultaneously on different levels of Impel Down. And I often see people on the internet accusing this decision of being a plot hole or out of character.
character, because if you look at what happens afterwards, yes, it is a monumental miscalculation, but you do need to actually look at Magellan's working. Magellan has Luffy, Buggy, and Blackbeard attacking the prison simultaneously, and he states that he cannot request help from Marine HQ because they're busy preparing for a big ol' war. So Impel Down is completely cut off and has to deal with this unprecedented event themselves, which is a very desperate situation to be in, especially when you consider the pride of the institution. It is a global symbol of justice, and if there were to be some sort of <laughs> mass breakout, then it risks destroying the public belief in the justice system. From Magellan's perspective, if he doesn't take extreme action right here and now, then at least one of the three groups is going to succeed and completely undermine the symbol of Impel Down. So he figures that, hey, this Shirio guy just wants a free pass to stretch his legs and kill some people for a bit, which is a lot more helpful than having him not do that. I do think that Magellan's decision looks a lot stupider in the anime because look, for whatever reason, they made it his idea to free Shiryu rather than Shiryu offering to help. So anime Magellan just up and releases a level six prisoner, assuming that he'll do the right thing with no promises, no evidence. That, that's stupid. So the anime definitely makes him look much less strategically sound, but that's not Magellan's greatest flaw. Really, Magellan's fatal flaw is something much more general, which is that he could not accept anything less than a perfect outcome. If Magellan was willing to accept that yes, some prisoners are going to escape and then found the most logical way to keep that damage to a minimum, then Impel Down would have had a much, much darker ending for our protagonist. But Magellan makes his position pretty clear with the following declaration. You will not set one foot outside of this prison. So one prisoner setting one foot, one step outside of Impel Down is considered a failure of unacceptable proportions. But unfortunately, the quest for perfection is always doubtful to fail. Just ask old mate Charlotte Katakuri. Wonder what's he up to right now? Probably not much because he failed. So really there's only so many plates that Magellan can keep spinning before they all come tumbling down. And that's really the only victory we get to take from Magellan. The fact that Luffy and the other prisoners defeated the symbol of Impel Down, which to me isn't as satisfying as your typical One Piece villain resolutions. But you do need to remember that Magellan is a Paramount War antagonist, which is the only saga in One Piece that really differs from the typical formula. Every other saga in the series has this end goal of defeating a major antagonist. But during the Paramount War, the goal of every arc was essentially just to escape. On Sabadee, they had to escape Kizaru. Then Luffy had to escape from Amazon Lily. During the war itself, we had to escape from Akainu. And of course, during Impel Down, we had to escape from Magellan. Although I will say that it was very satisfying to see Luffy's combination with Mr. Three. And there's even a brief, very brief moment where it looks like we may have cracked Magellan. Like when Luffy figured out how to hit Crocodile. But that moment is incredibly fleeting. And one mere poison upgrade later, we are back to fleeing for our lives. And in the end, we really did only barely escape with the help of a wax wall, a giant stab, and a big old wink from Ivankov. Oh, and also, if it wasn't for the Blackbeard Pirates, all of that still would have been for nothing because Magellan ordered a pursuit ship. So we really do have to thank the Blackbeard Pirates for defeating Magellan off screen on our behalf. But again, that is not satisfying. The villain was beaten by another villain and we didn't even get to see it. It's, it, it yeah. But also, I do need to bring this up. Initially, one of the most painfully satisfying things about Magellan is that he was a villain who did lasting damage because Impel Down ends with the strong implication that Magellan kills Bon Clay, one of the most beloved loved characters. And that feat alone would skyrocket Magellan's score on this tier list. However, the whole situation gets heavily undermined when we discover that Bon Clay is still alive on the cover page of chapter 666. Don't get me wrong, I love that Bon Clay's still alive, but it definitely lessens the overall impact of Magellan significantly, especially after he went and said, eh, any last words, Bon Clay? I mean, he probably didn't say it like that, but that is the traditional indicator of I'm going to kill you now. But what I guess Magellan meant is any last words, Bon Clay to your friends who have just escaped? Because you, Bon Clay, have been a very, very naughty boy and we're going to lock you in a dungeon for a long, long time. It just doesn't quite hit as hard. And I do think it contributes to Magellan being one of the more forgettable One Piece villains. Honestly, a lot of fans can't even name him. For example, when I ask a lot of you for your input as to the next villain we should rank on this tier list, a lot of people just commented, hey, can you do what's his name? You know, the poison guy from the jail. And that's not an amazing impression to have left on an audience. But in the end, that is Magellan's legacy. Less of the actual character and more of the general concept of poison. He's probably the villain that has given Luffy the greatest gift, being poison resistance and poison awareness, something that we are still seeing to this very day, such as recently in chapter 1111, when Luffy was immediately able to recognize a poisonous attack from Saint Saturn because it was similar to what Magellan used against him. So Magellan's effect, it 
is undeniably profound, but as an antagonist, or I guess as a character in general, he doesn't have anywhere near the staying power as almost every other antagonist. And we can see this most clearly in his post in Pearl Down character arc. Something I didn't have space to mention previously is Magellan's relationship with Hannibal, because Magellan does also have this motivation of keeping Hannibal off his back, as all throughout in Pearl Down, Hannibal can barely string a sentence together without demanding that Magellan resigns so that he can become the new chief warden of Impel Down. And eventually, this does become a reality. We don't really hear much about Magellan until Punk Hazard, when we learn that he was demoted to vice warden and that Hannibal is now the chief warden, which is what he always wanted. And I guess that just goes to show that manifesting works. Hannibal kept saying that he wanted to become the new warden and then bat, it, it happened. But it happened in a way that makes sense. Because Magellan did fail to prevent the greatest disaster that had ever been inflicted on Impel Down. The symbol was compromised and so he was demoted. Magellan also has a pretty nasty looking scar from whatever the Blackbeard Pirates did to him. And also one of his wings was damaged and patched up with assorted metals. With that said, it's not all bad news for Magellan though, because we did get some insight into his personal life. And apparently during the last two years, Sadi fell in love with him. And now he's known as the quote, most trustworthy man in hell. Other than that, Magellan has been pretty disappointingly quiet with the last reference to him, I believe coming from chapter 906, where Doflamingo is shown allegedly talking to Magellan, but we don't actually see him. So Magellan feels like an incomplete antagonist and not in a good way, because there are going to be other incomplete antagonists that we do need to rank as part of this journey, such as Blackbeard, Sakazuki, maybe even Emu, but they're incomplete because Oda is setting them up for bigger roles down the line. In the case of Sakazuki and Blackbeard, they've both progressed, one becoming a fleet admiral and the other becoming an emperor of the sea. But Magellan hasn't progressed. In fact, he's actively gone backwards, which indicates to me that we're done with him. If he does return in the future, it's not going to be in a major role, and so he'll always feel a little bit unsatisfyingly incomplete to me. Which is a shame because his threat level was superb, his motivation was incredibly solid, and even amongst One Piece villains, he stands out as unique. But then again, probably due to his agoraphobia, he chooses to stand out in a dark corner where very few people see and or remember him. And while I do think that Magellan is incredibly underrated as a villain, it's mostly because people forget that he exists in order to actually rate him. So if he'd had a more lasting effect, then I could see Magellan being an A, but in comparison to every other villain in One Piece, I can't justify giving him any more than a B tier. And you let me know in the comments which villain you'd like to see ranked next.